Now we will derive some alternative forms of energy equation. Firstly, I have write down adiabatic energy equation, which is h1 plus u1 square by 2 is equal to h2 plus u2 square by 2. Now first, we take h is equal to Cp into T. So h1 will become Cp into T1 plus u1 square by 2 is equal to Cp into T2 plus u2 square by 2. Now let us put Cp is equal to gamma r upon gamma minus 1. Our equation will become gamma r t1 divided by gamma minus 1 plus u1 square by 2 is equal to gamma r t2 plus gamma minus 1 plus u2 square by 2. Now gamma r t1 gamma r t1 will become a1 square gamma r t2 will become a2 square so finally our equation will become a1 square by gamma minus 1 plus u1 square by 2 is equal to a2 square by gamma minus 1 plus u2 square by 2 let us call this equation number b Now, as we have imagined in the definition of characteristic Mach number, take point 1 as point A. If you do not remember, refer that lecture. And we take point 2 corresponding to mark number 1 which is also at point A but it is an imaginary point. So at point 2 our velocity u2 will become A star. Now our energy equation will become a square by gamma minus 1 plus u square by 2 is equal to 2 is equal to a2 is a star divided by gamma minus 1 plus u2 is also a star so a star square by 2 by simplification a square by gamma minus 1 plus u square by 2 is equal to gamma plus 1 divided by 2 into gamma minus 1 a star square and let us call this equation as equation number c Again remember that the actual flow field itself does not have to be adiabatic from point 1 to the point 2. Here A star is associated with point A. So we can write this A star as A star A. This A star is nothing but A star A. Suppose our process from point A to point B is non-adiabatic then for point A characteristic speed of sound A star A will not be equal to A star B if this process is non-adiabatic. But if the whole process is adiabatic then a star will remain constant throughout the flow field. Constant throughout the flow field. Now let us derive the relation between stagnation properties 
and static properties. First, consider energy equation, which is h1 plus u1 square by 2 equals h2 plus u2 square by 2. H equals Cp into T plus u square by 2 equals, let us take point 2 as a stagnation point, Cp into T naught plus at stagnation point u2 will be 0, so u2 square by 2 becomes 0. Now divide the whole equation by Cp into T, so our equation will become T naught by T equals 1 plus u square by 2 into Cp into T and we know that Cp is gamma r divided by gamma minus 1. Gamma RT is A square 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into U square by A square and we know that U by A is Mach number so T naught by T will become 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into M square. This is the relation between stagnation temperature and static temperature and it is a function of M only. Now we know that pressure is directly proportional to temperature to the power gamma upon gamma minus 1. This implies P naught by P equals T naught by T to the power gamma upon gamma minus 1. This implies P naught by P equals 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into m square to the power gamma upon gamma minus 1. For density, we know that rho is directly proportional to t to the power 1 divided by gamma minus 1 implies rho naught by rho equal to p naught by t to the power 1 upon gamma minus 1 this implies rho naught by rho will be equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into m square to the power 1 upon gamma minus 1. So this is P naught by P stagnation pressure to the static pressure ratio and rho naught by rho stagnation density to static density ratio. And all these three relations are tabulated for air at standard conditions as a function of Mach number m. Now consider energy equation A square by gamma minus 1. We have derived this form of equation equal to we take point 2 as a stagnation point. So our A will become stagnation speed A naught square by gamma minus 1 and our U2 will become 0. Now as we have derived a square upon gamma minus 1 plus u square by 2 is equal to a star square into gamma plus 1 divided by 2 into gamma minus 1 this will be equal to a naught square by gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 is common both the side so finally, A naught square divided by A star square will be equal to gamma plus 1 by 2. We know that A naught square is nothing but gamma R T naught 
a star square is gamma r t star this will be equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma r is constant so t naught by t star will be equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 we can also write it as t star by t naught we can also write it as t star by t naught will be equal to 2 divided by gamma plus 1 similarly from this ratio t star by p naught will become t star by t naught to the power gamma upon gamma minus 1 means 2 upon gamma plus 1 upon gamma minus 1 we can write this because pressure is directly proportional to temperature to the power gamma minus 1 similarly rho star upon rho naught will become 2 upon gamma plus 1 to the power 1 by gamma minus 1 because rho is directly proportional to t to the power 1 upon gamma minus 1. If we take air as an ideal gas and for air we take gamma is equal to 1.4 so our T star upon T naught, T star divided by T naught will become 2 divided by 2.4 which will be equal to 0.833. Similarly, we can also find T star by P naught which will come out to be 0.528 and and rho star by rho naught will come out to be point six three four so what this ratio t star by t naught is equal to point eight three three denotes it denotes that if we take a fluid element at speed v is equal to zero and we speed it up to mark number 1, the temperature change from T0 to T star will be of the order of 0.833, meaning the temperature at M is equal to 1 will be 83.3% of the stagnation temperature. And similarly, we can also argue that pressure at mark number 1 will be 52.8% 52 of the total pressure and similarly density at mark number 1 will be 63.4% of the total density or stagnation density. Now we will derive the relation between Mach number M and characteristic Mach number M star from the alternative form of the energy equation that we have already derived which is A square by gamma minus 1 plus U square by 2 is equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 into gamma minus 1 into A star square. Now we will divide the whole equation u square and we will get a by u square divided by gamma minus 1 plus 1 by 2 is equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 into gamma minus 1 a star square by u square we know that u by a is equal to m this will become m square into gamma minus 1 plus 1 by 2 is equal to gamma plus 1 gamma minus 1 1 by m star square take gamma minus 1 common 
our equation will become m square plus gamma minus 1 by 2 is equal to gamma plus 1 by 2 into 1 upon m star square by simplification we will get m square is equal to 2 divided by gamma plus 1 by m star square minus gamma minus 1. Remember that m star is equal to u by a star. From this equation we can say that if m is equal to 1, if m is equal to 1, m star will also be equal to 1. If m is less than 1, then m star will also be less than 1. If m is greater than 1, m star will also will be greater than 1. But if Mach number m tends to infinity, our m star will tend to gamma plus 1 divided by gamma minus 1, which is nothing but a finite value finite value. We can also write this equation in terms of m star is equal to function of m which is nothing but only a calculation. Now we will consider one dimensional flow and in one dimensional flow we will understand what is normal shock 